Oh boy, Goblin Mode's looking at animal facts. I bet you he's gonna talk about the echidna's four-headed penis and how they make in giant orgies. No, dirty viewer, bad. If you want that kind of smut, you can go watch that filthy David Attenborough. I'm not here to talk about all that icky stuff with fluids and peni, no. I'm here to talk about animal facts throughout history, like how the giant tortoise started the whaling industry and why Winston Churchill had a stuffed platypus on his desk. In 390 BC, Rome was invaded. City walls were breached and Gauls were rampaging and pillaging throughout the great city of Rome. Last Roman defenders were held up on Capitoline Hill. Their positions were too fortified for the Gauls to take by force. But one morning, the Gauls saw either a messenger from the Romans or the path that he left, leading to a secret path through the stones up the hill. And they formed a cunning plan. Under the cover of night, they followed the secret path and reached the walls. Now, normally, this feat of Roman engineering would be an impassable barrier, but the Gauls have the power of friendship. So they made a human pyramid of love and scaled the wall. Their first warrior climbed atop the Roman wall. No guards noticed him, no dogs barked. He turned to beckon his comrades over when it happened. From out of the darkness. Oh man. Geese were tamed around 3,000 years ago in Egypt and were seen as symbols of fertility. Goose fat was considered to be a powerful aphrodisiac. And so the geese in this tale were there as sexual talisman. Not guard geese, although that is kind of cool. Think of it kind of like your Viagra waking you up to tell you someone's breaking it. Whereas this tale ends with the geese being honored by the Romans, an next animal is not as lucky. Hey King Louis the Prudent, I reckon I can make an instrument out of living animals. Why would you do that? I don't know, I mean like what else is there to do? Do you want to make it a bet? Yeah, sure, why not? Alright, I made a pig piano. What? Yeah, pretty cool, right? All I did was sound the pigs and got the ones that squeal in the right turns and semitones, lined them up on a keyboard, and bam, pig piano. How do you make them squeal on command though? Oh easy, I poke them with this. As much as I'd like to say this was a one-off, it wasn't. We seem to have a strange fascination with musical instruments composed of real, living, breathing animals who feel pain. And so, a few years later, the cat organ was conceptualized, but never built, thank God. This, this is a joke, right? Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be. I don't see any stitching, but this can't be real. No, no. It says here, it's a mammal, but where are the nipples? Where are the nipples? George, you, you really need to calm down about the nipples thing, man. When the platypus was first sent back to England, everyone thought it was a hoax. And because of its lack of nipples, it took 30 years before it was accepted as a mammal. 85 years later, the whole thing just got more complicated. What, what the hell is this? What? Why are there eggs in your little nest thing? It's my children. Yeah, we've been telling you that for you. Shut up, shut up, shut up. You are supposed to be a mammal. You have a weird big thing and a nest and you lay eggs and you don't have nipples. I also don't have a stomach. You need to sort your shit. I need to lie down. Once the British finally got their heads around the platypus, they grew to love. In 1943, Winston Churchill, busy fighting an empire of evil, sent a letter to the Australians saying, hey, can I have a platypus? Cheer me up. And the Australians stepped up to the task, sending the platypus they lovingly called Winston. Ah, finally, my little Winston is here. Oh, <coughs> yeah, wow, that has been dead for a while. Winston died en route to England, and Churchill, not gonna let a good thing go to waste, had him stuffed and kept him on the desk for the remainder of the war. Do you think the Prime Minister is okay? What do you mean? He's been acting a little oddly. What do you think, Winston? Oh, yes, Mr. Hitler is a very bad man, very bad man. I couldn't agree more. I'm sure he's fine. Oh, these islands are amazing. The sheer number and variety of species, it's truly incredible. I'm glad you're enjoying your time here, Charles. And they all taste so good. I haven't eaten this well in months. Wait, what? You're eating the species you're discovering? Not all of them. I'm not a monster. Right. But the tortoises are to die for, I have to say. And their eggs are just the best eggs. 
You ate tortoises and their eggs? I mean, I tried them as a steed first, but they weren't very fast. You rode the tortoises? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? The discovery of giant tortoises changed sea voyages forever. The tortoises were easily storable. All you have to do is flip them on their back and they're not going anywhere. And they could live up to six months without any food or water, meaning that they were a source of fresh meat on long voyages. And of course, they weren't exactly hard to catch and were soon being picked up by the ton by whalers. If that's not bad enough for the fate of these tortoises, they were also delicious. Apparently, tortoise oil was the one thing that could make the meat of a dodo bird palatable. This deliciousness meant that it took 300 years from their discovery before they could get a scientific name. All right, from that, quite frankly, bit of a downer, let's move on to this goofy boy. This goofy boy is a sunfish, or mola mola. They generally range in size from 247 to 1,000 kilograms. They're so heavy that the one recorded death at their hand was when one of them flopped onto someone and crushed them to death. They are also a threat to boats, as colliding with them can cause significant hull damage. In fact, it is possible that a sunfish is the reason the Hollywood Boulevard sank on its trip from Tasmania to Sydney. So the next time you're watching Attenborough and he's telling you how majestic nature is, or a history documentary telling you about the wisdom of the ancients, just remember, people are dumb as hell and nature can be as awkward as a teenager at prom.